go for a Tiffany & Co bag instead of a Louis Vuitton? Hi and very welcome! My name is Mary, this is my channel Lumi Level Up and I'm a luxury lover on an average income trying to be more mindful with my money. Today I have a very exciting video for you discussing the question how handbags from brands that are mainly jewelers hold up compared to luxury designer handbag brands. Some of you might know that I quite recently purchased this little leather shopping bag from Tiffany & Co, which is a brand that of course is mainly known for their silver jewelry and of course diamonds, rather than leather accessories. The most exciting part about this video idea is that it's not just going to be me talking about Tiffany & Co handbags, but this is a collaboration with two wonderful women here on YouTube, Lula LV and Train Girl Megan, who both will share their thoughts on two more luxury jewelry brands and their bags. Lula owns a stunning vintage Cartier bag and mini bag lover Megan, a Bulgari Serpenti crossbody. So I'm really curious to watch their videos as well and learn some more about the bags of Cartier and Bulgari, their quality, functionality and price point compared to the luxury designer bag brands we know. Since I don't own any Bulgari pieces at all, unless this little perfume, and from Cartier I only do own a belt and this tiny vintage coin wallet which is the smoothest leather, I can already say that. I can't wait to hear what Lula and Megan have to report on their bags. And their videos, of course, are linked down in the description box for you. So if you didn't come over from their channels, definitely watch their videos after you finished watching mine. And if you came over from one of the two, uh, I'm very happy to have you here and I hope you will enjoy this video and maybe consider to subscribe for some more content. For me and my video, as my cardigan might already make you guess, we are going to talk about Tiffany & Co bags. I always had a soft spot for that brand. I think the marketing just really hit with me when I was a teenager and their please return to Tiffany pieces were huge and it stick with me ever since. Additionally, I've always been a huge fan of Audrey Hepburn and her playing Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Just made the brand be on my radar ever since and very early on, way before I started purchasing any luxury items myself. I love Tiffany that much that even my own wedding ring is from Tiffany. I wanted something very dainty, very simple, so it's just a very thin gold ring with a tiny diamond. It's exactly what I wanted, but I'm losing track again on jewelry. We're here to talk about Tiffany & Co leather. They've been putting out accessories for years and decades, but never really pushed it marketing-wise. And till this day, it's not that very prominently advertised and displayed. Especially on the website, you kind of have to search for it. It doesn't have its own bullet in the navigation, but is hidden under home and accessories, and then you can pick leather goods. So it's definitely not a product range they put the highest focus on, even though they quite recently put out a whole new line of handbags and SLGs that pick up the iconic Please Return to Tiffany design with the iconic heart pendant. Either on bags, which have handles shaped like the pendant and the heart be the body of the bag, or stitched and debossed on SLGs like wallets and little card holders. They play with a lot of fun colors like crystal pink, cherries fuchsia, hibiscus red, especially now for spring and summer, but of course as well classic black and Tiffany blue. A lot of Tiffany & Co leather pieces, including my little leather shopping bag, come with silver hardware, but this is not Tiffany sterling silver, this is just regular metal. But the new Please Return to Tiffany bags, they actually have palladium plated hardware for the silver looking ones and even gold plated hardware for the golden ones. And I think that's definitely a thing to mention, considering these bags start at $1,750 for the mini size, up to around $3,000 for the large size, which definitely is a luxury designer bag price range. But Considering they use precious metals for their plating, which most luxury designer brands don't do anymore, I would say the price point is really not too bad. 
And the pieces that don't come with the plated hardware, they are at a somewhat lower price point as well. My bag, for example, was 1,200 euro and in the US it's $1,025. When we are talking about the leather quality of Tiffany & Co, I have to admit that I'm not an expert on leather. I definitely can tell a very cheap fake PU leather from real leather, but I don't think that I'm qualified to actually rate the quality of leathers. I can tell the difference by a smooth Cartier leather and this kind of Tiffany leather, but I cannot really rate it. I currently do have two Tiffany & Co leather pieces in my collection. My calfskin shopping bag, which currently retails for $1,025, and this grained leather wallet on a chain clutch, for which I unfortunately do not even know exactly what kind of leather this is and what the regular retail on it has been. Both of them are very different. The grained one is very durable, I'm not worried about using it at all. I bought it pre-loved and even though I had it for quite a while, it still doesn't show any signs of wear at all. The calfskin mini tote, on the other hand, is somewhat of a more delicate leather. I myself only had it for two and a half months by now and it can show scratches quite easily. And I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but I guess it will because this studio light shows it way worse than it is in reality. I think quite in the beginning when I just got that bag, I made a terrible mistake about storing it because I rolled up the shoulder strap and put it inside of the bag. Hold on, I have my little dust bag here. Put the strap inside and folded the bag up so that there was some kind of pressure on the shoulder strap and that left that hardly visible indentation that doesn't show a natural light, but it does show in this YouTube studio setup light. I think we can see it from inside as well. Yeah, I will try to film close-ups for you so you better see what I'm talking about. I noticed it for the first time when editing the reveal video of that bag and it's really not that bad in real life. It's hardly visible, but of course, ever since I noticed it, I cannot unsee it. And of course, that's entirely my fault that I did store it with the strap inside rolled up, not the bag's fault. But this kind of calfskin leather definitely is not that forgiving. It can scratch, it can easily get indentations, especially when stored improperly or touching any sharp edges of other bags. And as well, the items you carry inside of the bag might leave indentations. For example, if it's any keys and you don't carry them in a key pouch. So that's definitely a thing you have to keep in mind here. But of course, the kind of leather and texture you choose, no matter at which design house, will have a huge impact on the way an item wears. And strongly textured grained leathers tend to hold up way better than the softest lambskin or like in this case a calfskin. I haven't seen the new Return to Tiffany bags in person by now, unfortunately, but they are grained as well and they use Tarillion leather. Sorry if I pronounced that entirely wrong. I don't know that kind of leather, but it seems to be from a young bull. When it comes to the hardware and the stitching, the Tiffany and Go bags that I do own and that I did own in the past, they are and were very well made, down to the details. They definitely can keep up with luxury designer brand handbags. And depending on the designer handbag house you choose, the Tiffany and Co handbags compared might come at a way better price point. For example, if you compare it with Chanel, who don't plate their hardware in gold anymore and the new Tiffany and Co bags are. I want to include a quick comparison between the Louis Vuitton Sac Play BB and my Tiffany & Co leather shopping bag because they are very similar in size and especially in shape with the two top handles and a long detachable shoulder strap. The Louis Vuitton one is a tad bigger, especially in width, with the Louis Vuitton one being 21.5 centimeters, so about this width, and the Tiffany & Co one being only 17.8. But they are very similar in height with the Louis Vuitton one being 22, so about to that height, and the Tiffany & Co one being 21 centimeters. And in depth, the Louis Vuitton one is a tad more narrow with nine centimeters, so about here and the Tiffany & Co one has 10.2 centimeters. But overall, very much comparable. The Louis Vuitton canvas one is just lined with fabric, 
Whilst the Tiffany & Co one, as I already showed you, has this beautiful Tiffany turquoise, Tiffany blue leather interior. If I'm not mistaken, the Sakla doesn't have any closure, whilst the Tiffany & Co bag has a magnetic closure. Both come with a detachable and adjustable shoulder strap, which is very thin and dainty on the Tiffany & Co bag and quite regular sized on the Louis Vuitton one. And even though I don't own that bag, I've already seen it in store and touched it and I'm confident to say that the Louis Vuitton one is more of a stable, sturdy construction with a lot more structure, whilst the Tiffany & Co one is kinda thin and flimsy and it can be completely folded up to be just super thin like an actual paper bag, which I wouldn't necessarily take as a sign of worse quality, but rather keeping in mind here that the Tiffany & Co bag is intended to look like a paper shopping bag made out of leather. So it's rather a question of preference for the look and if you want to have more of the structure or if you're fine with that paper bag look. As I already mentioned, the Tiffany & Co Tiny Tote is currently at $1,025 regular retail, whilst the Louis Vuitton Sac Plan BB is more than double of that with $2,370 for the canvas version that has only leather handles and very small leather details, whilst this is a full leather bag. And the full leather, epi leather version from Louis Vuitton is $2,570. And Currently, the EP bag is just available in black as well. Here you have to consider your location as well, because Louis Vuitton, as we all know, is a French company and somewhat lower priced in Europe, so that the Secpla BB is only 1,850 euro here for the canvas version and 2,000 for the EP leather one. Whilst Tiffany & Co, of course, is an US American brand that is a tad higher priced here in Europe, so that this bag that is currently $1,025 comes to 1,200 euro. I cannot tell you what to go for. Obviously, you see that I decided to go for Tiffany & Co instead of the Louis Vuitton Sac Plain. Which has to do with the last point I want to cover in this video as well. The resale value, which really is not that good on Tiffany & Co leather pieces. Which probably is one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to these bags when looking out pre-loved, because you can score incredible deals. I bought this bag in brand new condition, before I put that little dent on it, for only 370 euro instead of 1200. And the clutch for only around 150, which is an incredible price compared with the regular retail prices of the Tiffany and Co leather pieces. So, savvy as I am, I probably wouldn't buy one of their bags brand new because it would just be at such a loss the moment I left the store. And you can find these items on the pre loved market. I bought both of my bags on Vestiaire Collective. Just for fun, I looked if they do have similar ones listed right now, and they actually do have. I will link them for you. They are not exactly as cheap as mine have been, but quite close to the prices, and maybe the sellers would even accept offers. So I found them. I will list them for you down in the description box, but I put this out with a huge disclaimer. If you consider to purchase anything on Vestia Collective, do your own research. It's at your own risk. In the past, I made a lot of great purchases at great prices, but in case anything does go wrong, that platform has the worst customer service. I personally won't shop with them anymore. I can't trust them anymore, but I found these bags and they are listed for you. So decide for yourself. I was debating with myself quite a lot whether or whether not to share these Vestia Collective links with you, but since this bag is not available anymore and the saving you can make on that one is really enormous, I think it might be worth taking the risk, but I don't want to be responsible in case you make a bad experience. So it's really a struggle. If you check out my channel, you will see that I have purchased a ton with them over, I think I've been doing YouTube for about one and a half years. So over that time period, there were so many unboxings and most of the times everything went fine and I did have struggles with them in the past as well. And then they agreed on an agreement after quite some stress with the customer service. But the last experience, unfortunately, was not a good one. So yeah, I've been struggling, but the prices are really good on these pieces. So 
I'm going to link them for you, but inform yourself and do your research. And there is linked a little golden bag as well that has quite a funny story because I already owned that bag. I had ordered it before and I was allowed to send it back because it didn't match the description. And it had some flaws that were not disclosed and they are still not disclosed. I do have a video about that and that's a negative Vistia Collective experience as well. And in case you are interested in that little golden bag, it's linked for you as well. Watch that video and if you have any further questions, hit me up because I don't want this video to get too long. But that was just a little side note that I wanted to include in this part of the video to just explain why there are these Vestia collective links. The prices were so good that I wanted to share it. But be careful. Be careful and consider your risk and then decide if the risk is worth the possibility of getting a great bag and the struggle you might have with finding a solution with Vestia Collective in case anything goes downhill. Wow. If you want to know more about my latest bad experience with them, that video is linked for you down in the description box as well. As well as the reveal of my Tiffany & Co shopping bag, which wasn't the very best first impression because that bag is so thin and flimsy and I somewhat was expecting something else because I never had it seen in store before. So in case this bag got you curious, definitely watch the other video first as well. But now I want to close on a way more pleasant note again. Sending you over to Lula LV and Train Girl Megan and their thoughts on Cartier and Bulgari bags. I can't wait to go there and watch both of these videos now as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time and bye. This feels so good. Whenever I touch this little SLG, I'm amazed again by the quality. Maybe I should look more into vintage Cartier as well. Okay, I have to admit, the perfume is not really it for me, but I don't wear a perfume today, so let's quickly do this. Hmm. Hmm. Obviously, you see that I went for the Louis Vuitton shopping bag instead of the Louis Vuitton sac plaire. Did I say Louis Vuitton? To watch next, either check out the description box for Lula's and Megan's video, or if you come from them, here you find the video about my Bad Vestia Collective experience, and here the first impression and reveal of my Tiffany & Co. little shopping tote.